So we have a little bit left from section 1.1 about evaluating functions, interpreting what those things mean, and even about possibly creating some of our own functions. So let's start with this function here. It's a function, a graph of a function I've made up. And the input that this function is taking is the number of hours I've been in a bike race for. And the output of this function is going to take the amount of time I've been in the bike race. The output is how fast I'm going at that point in the race. So the first question is find v of 3 and explain. So the big idea of what's happening in here is it's saying, here's an input, tell me what the output is. Right? So the input at this, it's asking us about is 3. What's happening at 3 hours into the race? Well, if we look at our graph, it's like, oh, things aren't going so well for Dan. He's stopped. Right? So at 3 hours into the race, Dan is going 0 miles per hour. And that's what we can write here. So we don't just write v of 3 equals 0. We'd even write a little bit more. We'd write 0 miles per hour. And then let's write the story, too. So we would say at 3 hours into the race, Dan is going 0 miles per hour. He's not moving at all. right? So in this question, they asked us about, they said, here's an input. Tell us the output. Let's look at the next question. They say, when was Dan going 12 miles per hour? And so thinking about what the function's doing, this is asking about the output of the function, right? It's saying, what input, when, was Dan going 12 miles per hour? So what input gives an output of 12? If we look at the graph of our function above, let's look at 12. Well, we see that Looks like one hour into the race I was going 12 miles per hour. But let's not stop there. Let's look at what happens later in the race. So I was slowing down for a while. I was not going too fast. And then I stopped. But then I started speeding up again. And it looks like, oh, at about four hours into the race, Dan was going 12 miles an hour again. So what do we do? Which one do we put? Well, we can put both. They're both right answers, right? So what we can say is let's write it down in kind of math notation first. We'll say v of 1 equals 12 miles per hour, comma, v of 4 equals 12 miles per hour. And what's this, what this is saying is an input of 1 gives an output of 12. An input of 4 gives an output of 12. And then we can also just write the story like we did before. So we'd say at 1 and 4 hours into the race, Dan was going 12 miles per hour. So finally, the last thing we want to be able to do that we haven't really talked about much yet is finding intercepts. So what's an intercept? We haven't really talked about that yet. Let's look at the definition up here. So a vertical intercept, let's just look at this one first, is where the graph of a function crosses the vertical axis. So let's come and look at the graph of our function. And where does this thing cross the vertical axis? Well, it looks like it's crossing it about right there. So what input is that? That's an input of 0. And the output is 16. So for the vertical intercept, what we have is that v of 0 equals 16. And the story is just like we had up here. It's just the same type of thing. What this sto The story for this is that zero hours into the race, so when the race just started, I was going 16 miles per hour. So I was doing pretty good at that point. Let's take a look at the horizontal intercepts. So the horizontal intercepts are actually the same exact thing. That's what these lines mean here. It says where the graph of the function crosses the, but instead of vertical, we're looking for the horizontal axis. So let's come back here. And so where does the graph of the function cross the horizontal axis? Well, it crosses it here, but it also crosses it over here. So again, what do we write down? Is only one right? No, they're both right. You can have more than one horizontal intercept. You cannot have more than one vertical intercept. You can have more than one horizontal intercept. And this is going to happen in this case at three hours and six hours into the race. So we'll write it in math, kind of mathy notation first. We'll say v of... 3 equals 0, and v of 6 equals 0. And now let's 
just tell the story of what those things mean. This is saying at three hours in the race, I was going zero miles per hour. And this one's saying at six hours in the race, I was going zero miles per hour. I should probably put miles per hour after each of these. Okay, so that's it for what we're gonna be doing with evaluating functions. So notice with the, with the three questions we have here, they give us an input and we're supposed to find the output. They give us an output and we're supposed to find the input. And then we talk a little bit about intercepts. And But a real important thing is here to be able to talk about the story the whole time, to be able to give this sentence afterwards. And to do that, really just focus on the input value and what the units are and the output value and what the units are. Okay, and you'll have plenty more practice of that in your text, and there's also some really good examples in the book. So before we're done, though, let's let's take a little bit of practice at making our own function and how, like, kind of how do we think? How do we want to think about this type of problem? So here's a problem where it's been set up that t is the hours into a bike race again, but this time d is going to be the distance I have traveled. It's a lot different than the speed, right? The distance I have traveled. So the story we want to kind of convey in this graph is that I start the race, I'm going at a decent pace, but then after two hours I stop for a water break, and then after four hours I stop for a shorter break, you know, and so I get going again after that first break. And so how are we going to convey this in a graph, or like kind of what's our thought process going to be? Is it going to, is it going to be the same thing like before? I start up here, I go down, maybe I stop for a little bit. Let's focus on our input-output pairs. That's at the core of what a function is. Always go back to what you know for sure about a function. We know a function is a rule that takes inputs and gives outputs. Right? We don't necessarily want to be thinking about the whole line. So let's think about an input of zero. What should my output be for this story? So zero hours in the race, how far have I gone in the race at that point? Well, I actually really couldn't have gone far at all. So I'm just going to put a dot there. Right. Let's kind of go forward a little bit. In an hour into the race, how far should I have gone? What's the output for one going to be? Well, well, let's say 15 miles. I'm a good biker. Let's go to two hours into the race. How far could I have gone? Well, maybe I was going to the same pace. Right? Maybe I was going 30 miles per hour. Or not, not 30 miles per hour. Maybe I've gone 30 miles at that point. But what happens then? Then I take a break. So how are we going to convey this in the function? And kind of notice here from this pattern we got, I could, it's reasonable that I can draw a line here, right? But what happens here? I take a break after two hours. So how am I going to convey that in the function? So this is distance traveled, and we haven't talked about the units here, but this should really be something like miles, right? This isn't miles per hour anymore. This is miles on the vertical axis. And so how do I convey the break? Well, let's think. Maybe maybe I take a 15-minute break. So where should I be at two and a quarter hours? Well, if I was taking a break, I shouldn't be any further, right? So I'm just going to put it there. I haven't traveled any distance. So I have to take a break. And I took a long break, right? So let's extend this line out a little bit longer. And then it says I keep traveling. So maybe at three hours, what was it, 40 Maybe at four hours, I was up here, and that's when it says I take another break again. So let's let's say I was traveling in between here, and it says I took another break. So I stopped my distance stopped changing for the time I was taking the break. This one it says it was shorter, and it says and then I kept going again. So then I kept getting further away from the finish line after I stopped taking my break. So. Take a moment to think about the differences between this and the speed, right? So this this and speed are different, and we'll get into that more later in the course, but the questions in the web work and the homework do ask already about speed and distance, so make sure you're thinking about the input-output pairs whenever you get confused. Ask at one hour, where should I be? At two hours, where should I be? At two and a half hours, where should I be? And with velocity, you know, the question isn't where should I be, but it's at one hour, question is at one hour how fast am I going at two hours how fast am I going and just try to kind of trace it out point by point until you can fill in the whole picture and that's the moral story functions input output pairs make sure you pay attention to what the what the actual meaning of the function is